How about now? Can you hear us? Yes. Great. Uh, yeah, instead of the chat, I think it's better you just use the microphone, the microphone. Otherwise, we don't pay attention to the, to the chat all the time. Yeah, I understood. Okay. So, yeah, maybe before. Um, um, before uh, going to the exercises, I will finish uh, the part of thermodynamics. I told you, we have information and thermodynamics. So we studied this morning the main concepts of information theory. And you will have another course on information theory, so you will see much more stuff. But this is the important thing, the uncertainty of a shadow entropy, the uncertainty of a random variable, and how you reduce this uncertainty by asking questions or by making measurements. And the reduction of this uh, uh, uncertainty is precisely the uh, nuclear information. Okay, this is information. Now we go to thermodynamics. The things that we have seen this morning is all the time um, uh, work, heat, and so on. So we need to know what is work, what is speed, and so on. In, in Andreas, talk, you have also talk about heat, different thermal bars and so on. So, well, heat and work is something that probably you know from thermodynamics, you remember, but uh, um, actually it's, it's a very controversial thing. Uh, heat and work is not, um, nowadays we, we, we don't have a clear definition of heat and work. So uh, in general, for a general situation. But for a specific case, the definition is completely clear. Which case is the case of a system in contact with the thermal bath. When you have a system in contact with the thermal bath, then everything is clear. Heat is the exchange of energy between the bath and the system. And work is the rest of exchange of energy between the system and the rest of the world. Okay, so uh, uh, um, from a microscopic point of view, it's also interesting. It's also possible to to deduct, to calculate the work, what the, the work as a heat in a process. The, the typical setup, Andreas also mentioned this morning, is this one. Mm. Okay. Uh, Let me share the. I want to use my fancy pointer. Okay, I'm going to use, a, use this pointer, which is a bit better. Well, this pointer is not very nice. 
So, well, anyway, you have uh, this is the microscopic uh, view of, of this of thermodynamic process. In, in thermodynamics, you have a system and you have a parameter that will move. Well, if you want to do the, the microscopic dynamics of this, you have to imagine that the system has a Hamiltonian, hold on, the system has a Hamiltonian. And the parameter, which is maybe the volume of your gas or a field or whatever, is the parameter in the Hamiltonian. Okay, so this is the situation. You have a Hamiltonian that depends on a parameter, or in general, lambda can prefer to several parameters. And X is a microstate, could be also a mesostate. And uh, and um, so, uh, what is a process or a protocol? You know, this morning, also, I mentioned protocol. Uh, protocol is, a, is to change the parameter in a given way, in a fixed way. Uh, in a statistical mechanics, the, the, the description of the system is uh, to a probabilistic state, and you have an evolution equation. Depending on the system, this, if it is an isolated system, you can have a real equation. If it is a system in contact with a thermal bath, you can have a pocket fan equation. If it is a quantum system, you can have the Schrodinger equation. If it is a quantum system in contact with a thermal bath, you can have the Hilbert equation. There are several equations for this object. Okay. So this is a, the general setup. So you have a role that depends on time, and you have a Hamiltonian. So, um, so here is the main idea. The main idea is that the, the, the average energy, which is this quantity here, this quantity here, if you differentiate with respect to time or, or calculate the differential, how it changes in time, then you have here a lambda depends on time. So you have to make a derivative. This is product, so you have the derivative of this times this and, the, and this times the derivative of this. And the derivative of h with respect to time, which is well, here lambda is changing in time, so you have to make the derivative with respect to lambda. This is called the conjugated force. Okay. It's a derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the parameter. So if you make the derivative of this with respect to lambda, then you get the conjugated force times rho. But you have also a change because the rho changes. So you have h times differential of the rho. So the energy changes, let's say, for two reasons. One is because the Hamiltonian changes, like when you change the, the field, the Hamiltonian changes, so the energy changes. But also because the state, the probabilistic state of the system, this row changes yeah, according to some equation, the equilibrium equation of work. Okay, so you have these two terms in the change of, of the internal of the energy of the system. Okay, so this is work and this is heat. Why? Well, um, the reason is a uh, uh, it, this is a very standard uh, equation how to uh, calculate heat and work in a system. The idea is that work is what the energy that, that the external agent uh, introduces in the system. And the external agent moves. You can imagine, for instance, an, a instantaneous change of the Hamiltonian. The, the energy changes, and this change is entirely due. To the external agent, so this is work. And and when you leave the system relax, you, know, you change it, and then you relax this, the, the 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 state of the system relax. This is in this relaxation, the system exchanges energy with the with the with the thermal bath because the agent is not doing anything. Yeah? So uh, this is heat, and this is. Uh, Okay, so this is this is work and this is heat. Right? This is uh, an important. We are not going to calculate this. You can uh, 
Actually, the heat is very easy to calculate because the, the for quasi static processes where rho in a quasi static process of a system in total thermal, but we know rho. Rho uh, usually you calculate rho by, by solving the theoretical equation or the heat equation or something like that. But there is a case where you always know what is rho. And it's when the system is in contact with a thermal path. Because in this case, rho is just the canonical, and it's quasi statically changed the, the, the parameter lambda. In this case, rho is just the canonical ensemble. And in this case, it's very relatively easy to calculate the two terms here. Okay. okay uh, uh, this morning we have seen um, that all this issue or all this problem of the connection between thermodynamics and information has to do with the Maxwell demon or the similarity has to do with the following. Some agents acquire information by measuring and then extracts work. So what it is important in thermodynamic information is this work how a system, uh, how much work can we extract from the system if we know something about the system. So for that, uh, if you maybe remember from thermodynamics, the, I think it's supposed to be, the, this is a, a, a blackboard or what is that? This is just a, I think it's a screen. A screen only. We have to use this one. Yeah. And there are the markers. Marker, no. Nice. Maybe you remember from thermodynamics that um, the maximum amount of work that you can extract or the minimal work that you have to do, work is always uh, bigger than the free energy, the final free energy minus the initial free energy. This is, a, this is the second law for, for isothermal process. This is for isothermal process. So is it like a... Thermodynamic basic concept, no? Like, uh, this is a basic idea of thermodynamics. You can, uh, you can, um, the, the typical way of, of, uh, of uh, deriving this is by calculating the total entropy in the universe, which is the total entropy in the system, plus the total entropy, or this is the system, plus the total entropy in the bath. And, uh, uh, the, the change of entropy in the bath is still divided by T. I'm using here a different convention of the science as uh, uh, Andrea Barato this morning used the opposite, but uh, this is the typical one. And, uh, and then um, this is, uh, 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 you have the, the first law, which is delta E equal Q plus W. Well, w is the work. So the system receives energy from an external agent, but it receives energy from the bath as well. So if, if you have this, you have that Q is uh, that delta I minus W. And you put this uh, everything here. You have delta C minus T delta E. Sorry, T delta S. T delta S minus E delta E. Remember that F is E minus Ts. So in an isothermal process, delta F is delta E minus T delta S of the system. So uh, this with this is a minus delta F. No, a minus delta F. And, and this minus with this minus is a plus. And now you take this here and then you get that. This is a typical derivation of this form. So for an isothermal process, you have that. Uh, you can derive this formula also from the definition of work that you have there, but I will not do it. If somebody's interested now, we can do it. So um, this is the this is a um, the statement of second law. If, if you have a cycle then this is zero. So this means that the work is zero. So you cannot extract work. Remember the extracted work is the extracted work 
with minus this, eh? this is the convention of style. So we, we, we have positive work when we put work. We have negative work when we extract work. So uh, this is the second law for isothermal processes. And um, okay, we would like to use this for the for our system as well for information when we measure for the CLR engine and so on, but we can and, and the reason that we can uh, well we could we could do it, but um, this is this is something that connects equilibrium states. Actually, the free energy, the thermodynamic free energy and the entropy, it's, we cannot. Uh, define this for non in principle we cannot define this for equilibrium state so this is not uh, this is not completely true for it but i will extend this to non equilibrium state. and the problem with information is that when you measure uh, the system is no longer in equilibrium or no because uh, the for instance in the case of the stellar engine equilibrium is that the particle fills the whole thing and when you measure or it's even more clear if you have two, two optical traps like this. The, 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 the equilibrium state is, is uh, to share. I mean, the particle is in the two. If you here with priority one half, here with priority one half. When you measure, you uh, drive the system out of equilibrium. So you need to express this for this, to extend this for systems out of equilibrium. And uh, how we did that? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I didn't understand that. Like, this, the fact that the system is in or out of, the, of equilibrium depends on the information that yeah. you have about the system. It's a subjective thing. It's a subjective thing. That's why. Right. Yeah. Okay. Is there something that is refers it refers to an observer and the observer is a yeah the very notion of you put I mean you're not the very notion of equilibrium. You can drive the system out of equilibrium by measure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, so we need to extend this to non-equilibrium, to processes involving non-equilibrium states. How we do it? Well, uh, this has been done by people not so many years ago, but uh, this is a result that it is many that has been derived independently by different people. And the idea is to 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 define the, a non-equilibrium free energy. And this non-equilibrium free energy depends on the Hamiltonian of the system and on the probabilistic state of the system. And it's defined as usual, E minus Ts. E in this case is the average energy, T is T, and S is the shadow energy multiplied by KK. Or the gives us energy that we introduce. The uh, non equilibrium free energy. And what it is uh, interesting, well, it is, this is a, a joke that um, it is not a thermodynamic function in the sense that it, it, the thermodynamic function only depends on H, and this one depends on H and O. So it is not a function of the state, it depends on. The history of the system and so on, but it has a nice property, which is that if I have a process and and I go from a from a situation from non-equilibrium to non-equilibrium and uh, isothermal, this means in contact with the thermal bar, this expression is the same for non-equilibrium free energy, and this is proved in many ways. In the in the material that I gave you, in the paper that I gave that I sent it to you, this is a review of all these issues for an encyclopedia, and it is explained there uh, these relationships. Okay, now we can we can explore this if you like after the exercise. Once you see the exercise, this is a proof, partial proof of this expression. But I will not give the proof of that. Okay. Uh, there are several proofs. I, I, I'm very happy with the proof, which is in the paper that I gave you. Okay. Well, it's memory, I, uh, I, I said memory, but it's system. 
this is for a system. Uh, this is because it's from another talk, but uh, this is for a general system. It could apply to memory. This is something that we would see after this. But it's, uh, okay. Now, what it is interesting is the following. What happens to the non equilibrium free energy when I measure something? Okay, when, uh, when I measure something, uh, the non equilibrium free energy is like that. Here we have to do some assumption that when you measure the system is not affected, then this is not affected, the average energy. I mean, it's not affected in the sense, uh, what? Uh, yeah, by measuring. Uh, no, the average, the average uh, energy is not affected because we are averaging not, not only over the probabilistic state, but also over the outcomes of the, of the measurement. And this is not affected. But the shadow entropy is affected. Like for instance, in the cigar engine, I have my particle can be in two places with probability one half, one half. And after the measurement is here or is here. So the shadow entropy, is reduced, and we have the same as the gain this morning that the uncertainty or entropy of the system reduces when I measure. And how much this is this reduction? Precisely the mutual information. So if I plug this into this, and uh, I get that just because of the measurement, after the measurement, uh, the free energy increases, the entropy decreases, but the free energy has a minus, the free energy increases. And so far in this, uh, at this stage of the theory, I don't care, of course, this increase, I'm increasing the free energy, so I'm increasing the possibility of the system to do work. This is not free, but I'm not going to, uh, I, I suppose, I just want to see the consequence of the measurement on the energetics of the process. I don't want to solve the big problem, which is uh, how to restore the second law. So, so this, this comes from the measurement. I don't, my, I don't care if this costs energy or not. But I know that if I measure, the, the, the free energy increases. And, and the amount is the multiple information. So now, suppose that I have a process, no? This is the standard second law, where I have, well, equilibrium or equilibrium or non-equilibrium. This could be equilibrium. Period. Usually I use this F for non-equilibrium and the Roman F for equilibrium, but this is, this is not important. Now suppose that I measure in, be, in, in between. Yes, I can apply the second law here and here. So I can compute the minimal work to go from here to here and the minimal work to go from here to here. And I have a jump because before and after, uh, uh, because of the measurement, I, I reduce the entropy of my system I increase the free energy, and this is the increment of free energy. So if I did, if I do that, I get what it is called a feedback second law. The work that I can extract from the system is the final minus initial plus some extra term, or sorry, minus some extra term that comes from the mission. And it's just it's as simple as this. It's a sophisticated way of saying I have some entropy, but suddenly I measure and for free, we will see tomorrow that this is not for free. We get some extra, we reduce the, the entropy of the system by Ki, I is the mutual information, or I obtain an extra free energy, which is Ki. And then I can extract more work. Remember that. This is work done, so when I change the sign, it's extract work. Now in a cycle, this is zero, I can extract work, like you can see that.
Es decir, a él intenta el siglo a su. Ok, so we don't need anything else to start the exercises. Now, you see that everything is a bit of general and abstract and so on. So now you are going to see this flow, in how it works in a practical case with this design with errors. Yeah. Of course, in the CRN, the CRN with no errors, it's very simple. This is delta F is zero. Mutual information is log two. And I have that the structure works is k to log two. So but you will, this is very easy, but you will have to do now. You know how to do the table or something like that, no? but uh, okay. Now you have to try to do the exercise. I think for the online people, the online people, I also ask you to do it. Now I will connect my iPad. So this is this ends my presentation. Now you have all the all the material to do the exercises. What we can do is to leave. I leave you like fifteen minutes to work the exercises. You can talk uh, in groups or whatever. And um, to do the first exercise, the first exercise is even you can do it just with what we said this morning about the still activity. It's a uh, it's a uh, the stake for the second exercise, we need mutual information and so on. So uh, let's do something. I will give you 15 minutes for, for the first exercise. We can I can go around and uh, and uh, solve questions if you have some problem. And uh, and then after 15 minutes, we will solve the exercise. Maybe when you or I will solve it, and we can discuss it. Remember the exercise is the uh, is, is is just the the sila and the sila. Now we can. No, let's uh, uh, spend the uh, Can you put it back? Uh, remember, it was like that. So you have a Silla ND, you put the pistol in the middle, and you measure. So, uh, but there is a probability of error. So if, if X is the position, and A is the outcome of the measurement, you can have left, right. But if the position is X, you have left with probability one minus epsilon and right with probability epsilon. Because you have a probability to have a mistake uh, because of your apparatus is not precise. Okay. So you, you, you measure left, right. And then once you measure something, you cannot move in the in the original CRND, you move this all the way to the right, for instance. And here you can't because maybe the maybe the the particle is here. So you cannot compress it down to zero. So you compress it uh, up down to uh, I think it's to alpha alpha B. B is the total volume. Well you can put B equal one to B cancer. So here, uh, this is the situation. So uh, if you are right, you, you expand the gas and you get work. But if, what happens if you are wrong? If you are wrong, the particle is here and you are compressing. So, uh, and this of course with the probability epsilon on one magnitude. So you have to calculate the work 
which would be a function of, of epsilon and alpha. Calculate the exact work. Okay. In, in average, of course, the average structure. We are we are all the time uh, thinking of average. Okay, the online people maybe they just see the explanation, but uh you can like rotate the camera and like to well, it's okay. Uh, it's in the I mean it's in the exercise. So if you have any question, just ask me. So uh, I will leave you it's in 50. Let's uh, uh discuss at the uh, five past four, we can discuss the exercise. But it's good for you to, it's very simple. I mean, it's uh, an exercise of uh, elementary thermodynamics. Well, elementary thermodynamics, like playing with the probability. Here you have this, this slide with the scenario, the original scenario engine, so we can also.
Okay. And when you refer to the protocol that maximizes the extractive work, how do you how do you design that? Uh, the veloc no the um, the alpha that maximizes the the work. Oh, okay. Yeah, epsilon is fixed. Epsilon is given by the measurement. The, what we call the protocol is what do you do after the measurement. So the alpha and the parameter, parameter is alpha. So it is uh, to maximize the structure work uh, over alpha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Me sale algo raro. Sí, no está bien. Bueno, pero va, te da igual. No está bien, pero te da igual. Pero realmente, o sea, tú, cuando cuando mides a la izquierda, no cuando realmente es a la izquierda. Cuando bueno, esto es importante. Y no se importa cuál es vertical list. Lo importante es que si tú pones el row o el row, entonces, más simple. O sea, puedes pensar. Ya, lo único importante es que cuando te equivocas, pasa una cosa para que no te equivocas. Sí, sí, sí. Yo me equivoco con el 
In principle, the, in the in the exercise statement that I gave you, look, alpha is this thing. Alpha is what you expand, and alpha is between one half. Alpha is between zero, between one and one half. Epsilon. You could have also factor. This is the way you do it. So when alpha is equal to one, you should recover the el menos se dice que el menos esto es menor que uno no lo puedes sumar no lo puedes sumar como tal porque tienes que restar uno porque uno es un trabajo que sale negativo automáticamente sale negativo no lo tienes que sumar negativo a a a please calculate also not not only the optimal but the máximo o el práctico o por this protocol la variación del punto de vista de la partida simplemente evalúa la integral y automáticamente Yes. <laughs> 
Sí, sí, eso, eso es lo que se perdió. Si tú mires bien, vas de aquí a aquí, digamos. A ver, VPN es alto. Y si mires mal, no te vas de aquí a aquí. No, no, vas aquí a aquí. Pero que es lo mismo que tú has dicho. Vale, ya lo sé. Claro. Claro, la partida es una composición del sistema. Claro, claro, claro. 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 Means that we perform an expansion, 
And the expansion, the extracted word is um, KT log of the, remember, it's always the, this was in the in the slide, in the previous slide, the final minus division. Let's, let's put it here. Well, let's put it here, this formula, no? The final divided by initial. Okay, so if we are right, let's say the, the measurement is okay. Measurement okay. Then we perform an expansion. Which expansion? Uh, um, uh, this is the extracted work. If it is okay, uh, uh, it's an expansion from um, from the initial the final volume is alpha, alpha times volume if you write that alpha divided by initial volume which is one half. So this is kt log alpha one half alpha two alpha sorry. And here we recover the expression in uh, in in the zeta n. You know that if we recover it if alpha is equal one. If alpha is equal one, uh, we expand the all, all the way and then we get that. And uh, if the measurement is wrong, uh, so here we can have the measurement is wrong means that the part is here. And we believe it is here, so we expand. But in fact, we believe that we are expanding, but in fact, we are compressing. So uh, I will, I will uh, write this in, in red. If the measurement is wrong, that the extracted work of the bomb is KT. And now the final volume. Is a smaller the final volume is one by itself. Which is a smaller than one half. And, and the initial volume is one half. So we have KT log of alpha uh, one half one uh, one minus alpha. No, sorry, uh, two one minus alpha. Uh, and you see this is positive. This is positive and this is negative. Which means that the compression, if we are wrong in the compression, uh, we, we, ex we, we don't extract any work. On the contrary, we, we do work. And, uh, and here you see also that alpha cannot be equal to one. Because in this case, we have the log of zero, which is infinity. So this is just the fact that we cannot compress the gas, even if it is just a single particle. We cannot compress to zero volume. Okay. Even an ideal gas, we cannot compress. So um, this is a measurement, okay, measurement problem. Uh, now, now uh, we, if we repeat the cycle, it can happen either this and this. With this, of course, with the probability one minus epsilon. And this, of course, with the probability epsilon. No, we are wrong with the probability epsilon. In principle, in the real system, it would be small. So, but uh, okay, let's read in general. This is uh, so we have to the extract work. It's just the average. No? Uh, weighted with the with the epsilon. Let's wait this first. This is the measurement is okay with probability one minus epsilon. And the measurement is wrong with probability epsilon. And this is the traffic work in average. And uh, well, one can prove it is, well, it is not easy from here. No, no, sorry, I don't say Okay, this is the extracted one. Okay, so this is the, this is the first question, no? This was the first question. The, what is the extracted one? Okay. So um, 
And second question, to uh, look for the optimal protocol. Uh, so what is the optimal protocol? As we said before, epsilon is given, it's given by the apparatus. So, so uh, here, the only, the only choice that the, the demo, let's talk about the demo here, the, the person that introduces the piston and does it, the only choice is alpha, alpha we can, we can choose alpha as we like. So the my optimal protocol here means what is the optimal alpha. And this is very easy. We have just to calculate or maximize the function. So we calculate the derivative of the extracted work with respect to alpha. And we have one minus, uh, well, everything in KT, we can extract KT here. And we have one minus alpha, sorry, one minus epsilon log alpha, so we have to divide by alpha. Plus, no, sorry, minus, because there is a minus there. Uh, epsilon divided by one minus alpha. And this is the maximum, well, we don't know, we, we could plot this for a fixed epsilon. Well, we can make a plot of this in, in terms of alpha. Oops. This is, it's the stack. This is a, uh, it's up, oh, really? Well, oh. <laughs> oh, it's just, no, no, no. No, it's just that I'm, I'm breaking this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, this is zero, and, and we solve this equation for alpha, and we get alpha equal, alpha, let's say, optimal. And we get that alpha optima is equal to one minus x. Okay. And, um, and we can compute the, the maximum work, the optimal. And this would be one minus, this is interesting, KT. This is one minus epsilon. Well, I can extract a log two here. You see that, that there is a one minus epsilon log two epsilon log two. So this is a log two uh, uh, in front of this is a log two. And then I have uh, one minus epsilon. Sorry, plus no plus one minus epsilon uh, log of one minus epsilon. And uh, epsilon log epsilon. And this is an interesting formula. Uh, this one. This is the, the maximum work that I can extract. Uh, these two these two things are interesting. The optimal protocol and the maximum work. Because of the other. Uh, so uh, the and the maximum work is this one. It, this can be read, this looks like you see there is KT log two, which is the the, the, the stiller. It's like the entropy of the binary. And this, what is this? First, this is this looks positive, but it is not because epsilon and one minus epsilon are smaller than one. So this is negative. And actually, it's better to write it like that. Where what well, H this is a function. This is in the in the in the exercise. You see, uh, this uh, expressions are simplified by using the function. This, this is the Sharon entropy of a binary variable with probability epsilon. And it's maximized no, in the epsilon equal of one half. No? This is maximized uh, in, in epsilon equal one half. Yes. Yeah. So H of epsilon, if you like, you can plot it here. And this is log two. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, ah. Uh, 
This is the maximum value. So when uh, when epsilon So the maximum extracted work when epsilon is zero, I can extract kt log two, which is the sila because it's a sila without error. When epsilon is one half, I extract zero, and this is what we call also a blind uh, blind uh, protocol because mm. we okay we measure but the, the the outcome of the measurement is one half. I mean it's it's, it's random, it's random. Here we see also what we were discussing this morning. Uh, this, your question that uh, if epsilon is one, so when epsilon is one, you, you are wrong all the time. So you will be compressing all the time. But mathematically, what you obtain is this one. Why? Um, uh, well, I think it's first because uh, this is no longer a maximum and a minimum product. Uh, but it is also physically, it's because if epsilon is completely wrong, I mean, if the measurement is completely wrong, you can just uh, do the opposite yeah. and, uh, and you, get, you get the protocol, which is the protocol, which is the inverse of what we expected, which extracts the maximum amount of the one. Yeah. I just want to say yeah, epsilon is one, then alpha is zero, so you're compressing in negative direction, which is the gain. Yeah, uh, probably is the, the, the solution is alpha and negative. Ah, yeah, alpha, alpha is. Zero, so like alpha C is zero. So if you go back, yeah, by, yeah, which implicitly means that you know the function. When you ask this morning, you need to know the function. Well, we, yeah, we need to know the function because in this case, the function is the negation of the of the argument. You know, if the function f of l is right and f of right is l, but it is a unit. It's, it's a function of the, uh, the measurement outcome is a, is a function, the deterministic function of the state. Okay, more things here. Yeah, something which is also interesting is the fact that, so uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, I have to compress just a, an amount alpha, which is one minus epsilon. So this means that this is epsilon, no? The 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 the, the tiny, well, the tiny, you know, the, the the space that I get here. So uh, this is a, this is not a coincidence. This is something that makes the process completely reversible. This is one of the big discoveries that I think was not in Bennett's in Bennett's explanation. That um, so suppose you measure something, you measure the you have a measurement of something. And you want to optimize the, the use of this energy. You want to extract the maximum amount of energy that you have. Which, what is the way to do that? So one moment. Is to, to do a protocol that is completely reversible in, in the probabilistic sense. And this is, is completely reversible in the following sense. Wait, suppose you start, you put your, no, you put your, um, You, you, you do your protocol. You put your here, uh, this in the in the right. And now suppose that you measure, you measure uh, left. Left is the outcome of your measure. What is the probabilistic state of the system? And suppose you know that your errors and all these things. The probabilistic state is that the particle is here with probability one minus epsilon, and here with probability epsilon. Okay, even though the, the, the piston is in the middle, and then you move the piston here. Okay, and here the particle is here with probability epsilon, and here with probability one minus epsilon. Now think of the reverse process, which is something that probably I, I don't know if people in stochastic thermodynamics we, we do this game a lot to to uh, to have a protocol where you do something. And you consider the backward pro protocol, which is the Andrea talks this morning. But you do uh, reverse in time your action. So here you reverse in time. So here you put the piston here, you move it to the middle, and you remove it. 
Look, when I put here the piston, what is the probability of the particles? The particle scale, epsilon. 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 Identical, probabilistically speaking, the forward process is equivalent to the backward process. And this was a big discovery, the discovery of what well, the discovery. Well, it was not, was not, well, yeah, we did it. Uh, Jordan Horowitz and, uh, and Fury, but not by me, but I don't know how to pronounce the last name, by not putting them. Well, uh, they discovered something and we extended it. And, but this is a new thing that uh, to define reversibility in, in, this, in, in processes where you have a, a meson. And we will not talk about this because it's a whole topic that uh, you can look at. Uh, if somebody is interested, I can give you some hints and, and some papers. And it is, it is, this actually is not a coincidence. It's just what makes the whole protocol reversible. So could you repeat how was the reverse protocol? I don't the, know. Probabilistic so, speaking. These are the probabilities. These are the probabilities. Mm -hmm. So when you measure, you update your probabilities after before measurement. This is one half, one half. Okay, this is here. One half, one half. And now you measure, and, and by measuring, this is the magic of measure of measurement that uh, you don't touch the system in physical. You have to measure that. Okay, let's, let's, let's think. Okay, ideal classical measurement would be not touch it. And, and, and the system and, and, and the probabilities changes. Change. The probabilities change. Mm -hmm. If epsilon is zero, then you know for sure that it's on the left. Okay? But if epsilon is not zero, you let's say you update your state. This is called Bayesian update, and it is very different statistics. You update your probabilities and, and you incorporate the new information. And then this is your new state. Okay. And okay, then you go. Now consider the backward process. The backward process is such that the updated state, the probabilistic state, coincides with this. Because when you insert, now consider the backward process. By inserting the piece of here, <coughs> you mimic the two probabilities. Probability will be here instead of here, the probability will be here for minus. So your, your state, probabilistic state in the backward. Is identical than in the forward. And this is the notion of uh, feedback reversibility. So, when you apply, for example, the perturbation theorem we talked this morning, the uh, total amount of entry will be precisely zero. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Because the perturbation theorem is the feedback system, they need uh, a, a full uh, new validation as well. Ah. But, uh, but essentially, they something like that. I will not talk in the review. So the review is a short version of the, uh, well, no, the review is a long version of the, the review that we publish in Nature Physics. And, uh, and, and I'm writing a book, which is the long version of everything. And, and there's a chapter on fluctuation theorems and feedback, the, uh, feedback systems. And another chapter on reversibility of in feedback systems. And in the book, if I finish it, which is supplemental. Who knows? <laughs> and then, uh, then they will have all the information there. Of course, there are papers and so on. Uh, but this is it. This is interesting. The notion of reversibility. Okay. So to finish the the uh, here, you see that we are not considering the cost of measurement or the cost of uh, erasure that we talk about this morning. We are just thinking of the demo measured something and what is the effect of this measure so the effect of this measure is that i can extract work i can optimize the work that i start by doing so and so uh, let's now connect this with the second law so remember that we have the second law here uh, the law that i just uh, so we are uh, now we are going to Um, now the second exercise, in the second exercise, we are going to check this, 
So we have obtained the exactly work because this is a specific example where we can apply the, the, the law of the ideal gases and we can uh, solve it explicitly. But think of maybe the system is optical tweezers or something complicated that you cannot explicitly compute the work. But we have this tool. So what I want to what I want to do, what I want you to do in this type of exercise is, is to check this. So this is the this is the system and this is the outcome of the measurement. So the first part of the exercise is to calculate this. So now you are going to use a little bit of information there. So you have to calculate this. And the second part is to check that this is okay. For this, it's good to if you use uh, the this formula because whenever you have a binary a binary vial, uh, you the entropy is immediately is very easy. But for this, you have to calculate. Well, I don't know if so. So the first part is to calculate i. I I will let you with the formulas here. How do we let you So the first part of the exercise is to calculate. Let's see. Uh, I think in this case the best uh, the best formula to use is um, the third maybe. Is uh, the third? No, the third is the mess. Well, it's very wrong, but it is huh. uh, to calculate. Well, you can start. I think the best one, let me uh, put it here. The best one here would be uh, calculate I at M. <laughs> uh, as uh, HM. Minus H N X. This is the best way. You can use the other formulas. You remember, uh, we write three formulas. This one. And this one. But in this case, I think the best one is uh, maybe there are, of course, there are many ways of doing this exercise, but uh, I think this is the best way. This formula. And then check the second law. I will write the second law here. Here the work is the is, remember this is the, the real work, not this minus the extracted work. This is bigger than delta f minus 85.
No, pero no, no te vale el P1, P, P, P1, 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 ¿Por qué? No. Porque éxito es la probabilidad de que tú miras algo saliendo de mi pareja. ¿Puedo coger cualquiera de las Sí, pero la propiedad es que suele no, 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 Digamos que estoy usando eh, 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 no sé, eh, 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 la cosa es que puse la de X sobre X, la de M sobre X, y para la HDM, antes de la de la la de 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 Yeah, 
at the same amount of time. Yes, and you do not need to be the original shoulder. So, the longest piece of sheet that is for us, yeah, and yeah, sería alfa 1 menos alfa. Vale, entonces he hecho la producción de propias por calcular cuál es la fórmula de Of the particle is called X and uh, the outcome M. 
And this is the situation we have. Well, if, if this is for a binary thing, but ah, zero one. Okay. Okay, let's, let's follow this. <laughs> so it says zero one. Yeah. Well, we will we will uh, replace it by left, right, and zero is with probability p, and one is with probability one minus p. And then uh, you have to measure, and you have a probability of error which is epsilon. So uh, you have epsilon here, epsilon here, and one minus epsilon is the probability to measure correctly. So you can you can this is a typical scheme. This scheme, this scheme is used also. Uh, this scheme is nice because, well, this is also for measurement. For measurement, you have the object that you want to measure and, and the outcome. So the, the x induces, let's say, that determines n somehow. Okay, well, not, not determines because it's random, but, uh, but this is also an information theory. This is called a channel. Because it's a typical, uh, actually, this was the first idea by Shan to study a communication channels. Because you have a cable with can be the computer and an external hard drive or your phone and the, and the central, uh, the antenna of the central could be whatever. Two systems, one is emitting symbols as bits. Like this one, and the other is receiving bits, and uh, and then uh, because of uh, interferences or atmosphere turbulence or whatever, you can have an error sometimes, and and then there is all this story of error correction. Probably have here about error correction, which is patent information, and um, so so. This is the binary channel. Is the the let's say the the the, the most important and most basic uh, case of a communication channel. And the mutual information is very important because it's the, it's the mutual information in, in information theory is also called the uh, channel capacity because it's how much information you can uh, transmit in a channel. If the if, if the noise is so big that M and X are independent, mutual information is zero, and you cannot transmit, you cannot use it, it's bad or anything. Uh, but if uh, you have a probability of error, which is not one half, then you can transmit some information. Uh, okay, so let's calculate the width. So I, I told you that the best the best thing here to use is the is this one. Hm minus Hmx. Because these are the, we could use the other formula, no, which involves the other formula is Hm, Hx, Hmx, Xm, or But this involves a variable which, which is Xm. Uh, Xm can take all. So XM can take all four values. So this is not a binary, I mean, the, the, the pair is not a binary value. This is a binary variable. This is a binary variable. So when, when you have a binary variable, uh, the, the, you know that the, we can use this function. The, let me write it here. Uh, we can use the, the formula that it is in the exercises, h of something, x uh, is uh, minus x of x, minus one minus x of x. This is the entropy of a single variable. It has this shape when x is one, this is, and this goes to log two. This is the maximum entropy of a binary variable. In that's we are talking, we are talking in that. This in, in bits, this is one. No, log two is one. Log, log is log in base two, log base two of two is one. Okay. 
Okay, so we are going to use this, this formula for um, this formula for a single variable. So the only thing we need to know is, is this is a binary variable, this is a binary variable. So the only thing we need to know is with which probability takes on the probability, the, the value zero and the value one. In this case, it's very easy because it doesn't matter the value of x. N is binary variable with probability set zero one minus zero. It doesn't. Okay. I mean, if you fix, if you fix x. If you fix x, if x is zero, then uh, n is zero with probability one minus zero, one with probability and if x is one is the opposite, but the probability is always the same. So this is this is just h h epsilon. This is just h epsilon. This term. This term here. So we only have to calculate h of n. And to calculate h of n is a binary variable, so we need to calculate the probability to be zero or one. So what is the probability? Let's do it here. What is the probability that, for instance, that n is equal to, let's say, um, one, no, zero. So for n to be zero, you have two possibilities. X is zero. And I measure okay, and the measure is okay, or or x or x is one and I and I measure wrong. So these two possibilities are x is zero and I measure so x is zero and I measure correctly, or uh, x is one and I measure wrong. This cannot be simplified if you think it, it is actually it is P plus epsilon uh, minus 2P epsilon. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't admit any further simplification. Let's call this Q. And what I knew is that H of M is H of Q. So that's it. Ixm is h of q minus h of epsilon. And, uh, yeah, I don't think it can simply. Okay, you could maybe simplify this by using the specific value of h of epsilon. But it's, uh, I don't think it's working. So you see what's a uh, um, not so. I'm sorry, what, what, what was the oh, okay. And Q is a number between zero and one, which depends on, and, uh, and of course, what uh, this is what I mentioned that maybe this is too general. Although this is nice, this is, I mean, if you are in communication theory, you probably have people use it all. So, and, uh, this is possible, always possible. This is also interesting. I didn't show any in information theory. There are a lot of uh, inequalities, like entropy is positive, information, mutual information is positive. Uh, maybe next week with uh, I don't know the name of the professor, but Dimitri, Dimitri will uh, show this. We prove this. My idea is just to use the intuitive. Uh, the ideas of that. Okay, but now the, the purpose of this exercise was to check the second law. And let's do it. Uh, in the case of the cigarette ring, uh, we insert a pistol in the middle. So P is one half. Yeah? Remember, we insert a pistol in the middle, then we move it and we remove it. But in the formal process, we insert it in the middle, we move it as well, alpha, and then we remove it. So P is one half. And when P is one half, this is very easy because uh, uh, this Q, you can see it here, is one half one minus epsilon, epsilon one half. So it is, it is, uh, it is uh, one, one half. So it doesn't matter what, when P is 
di Zuhat, bukan Zuhat Wahab dan Suama Yusuf. The ways to go from zero is Wahab, Suama Yusuf, Epsilon. Wahab, Epsilon. So at the end, Epsilon cancels and you have. So, so if P, if P is Wahab, the, the mutual information is H of, H of one half minus H of epsilon. And remember that H of one half, which is here, is log two. Let's go back in a minute. So this is, uh, this is log of two minus H of epsilon. And now, and now you see what we calculated using physics. You see here, I, I, I like these this exercises because it is, you go from physics to mathematics and, and you see that, that you reach to the same point. So this, we did this, we calculate this before using physics. I mean, using the equation of ideal gases, because the law of V divided by volume, final volume, this is the consequence of the ideal gases. So we, we, and we calculated this, you know? And now we see that we obtain the same thing. Yeah? The extracted work is just the mutual information. And this is, the, this is just a consequence of the second law. And you remember the second law for, uh, is the, the, the work is which is minus extracted work is bigger or equal than delta f plus or no sorry minus kt so uh, delta f is zero in in the in the steel regime because it is a cycle you have you go back to the original so this is zero and then uh, this means that the Extracted work is a smaller than KT, the mutual information. And this is a consequence of the second law. Actually, this is the second law for any cycle. This is for any cycle. For any cycle with the, with the method. Of course, the second law for a cycle is that the extracted work is smaller than zero. But if you have a measurement, this is. And this is possible because I can extract work. And look at the result. We have calculated this using uh, information theory. And we, we, we got H2 minus H. And you have calculated this using physics, using ideal gas equation and so on. And you have obtained the same result. But this tells you that the optimal protocol that you calculated is optimal not in the same, not only uh, because you did the calculation and uh, it's, it's optimal, but you cannot do better. You cannot do better. And the second law is, is, is important. Of course, it has a importance from the point of fact, conceptual point of view, but it is also a benchmark to what you can do. And a benchmark is always useful because you, it, it, is, it helps you to, to see if you are far from the optimal or not. So even uh, so, this this type of uh, inequalities are important. And um, and here we see that the cylinder engine meets the inequality, so can reach this optimal structure. And we see that this is a practical case of the second law of feedback process. And also, you have seen the importance of the mutual information. This is something that Charles Bennett didn't uh, care about. That um, uh, they they consider only uh, error-free measurement. Where and an error-free measurement, remember that the, the mutual information in an error-free measurement, uh, this is zero. Or so the mutual information is just the edge of the gap. But here you have to go. Okay. Um, I have a problem with the sign of the bar. Maybe the sign of the equality at one point. 
because uh, yeah, this is a, okay. This is because I like to write the. Usually, you will find the second law written in this way. Although this morning I was surprised that Andrea used the opposite uh, conventional sign, but in a stochastic thermodynamics, we always use this one. This is the word that this is the way that we need to use in this. This is why we wrote the first law is always like that. The first law is delta e equal to We always write the second the first law. So this is the word that you do. And it's minus the word that you extract. Or in other words, when direct, to extract work, that you must be negative. So you have to, and the, the second law is like that. The second law is always the work is bigger than something, than delta S and the And if you want to, if the extracted work is minus, and in a cycle this is zero, so you have minus minus. And you can revert the size by 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 swapping by. Yeah, I, I see that. That's where I'm puzzled when we replace this expression of extracted work and mutual information. It seems to me that it should be the other way around. No, no, you just have that. You can change this. You can multiply it and inequality by minus one. If you change the the yeah the direction of this. E is uh, I is positive, right? I is positive. And I is positive. H of Q minus H of epsilon. This is positive always. And this is easy to see in this case because H epsilon, H epsilon has this form. Well, sorry if it's very small here, but it has this form, it's like a parabola, and the maximum is log two. So H epsilon, log two minus H epsilon is always positive. Yeah. So this is the maximum value of I. So when uh, we are not at the maximum, we have less than this, and on the side of the expected work, it's log two minus h of epsilon, so it should be expected work is more than i k t i. No, this is what you obtained before in the first exercise. In the first exercise, you obtained that the max, the optimal work. With the optimal protocol is kt log two minus yeah, h. So log two is the maximum of uh, h of uh, q. Yeah. So this particular box is uh, more, uh, more than kt i. No, no this is always bigger than this. Log two is always bigger than this. So i is positive. So the extracted work is smaller than some. This is more than this one, and the maximum word that you can extract is KTH, H, uh, not too many things. Okay, I have to, I have to think of this. Log two is the log two is is the uncertainty of the position. Actually, this is another way of thinking of the Log two is the uncertainty of or the entropy of the particle before measurement. H of epsilon is the entropy of the particle after measurement. And you have a reduction of entropy, which can be used to extract this amount of work. Because by the way, this work, this work we, we, we do, tomorrow we will do things in terms of entropy, but of course, when, when you extract this, this is, you extract this energy, this energy comes from the thermal path. So the heat, so this is this is the extracted work, and this is equal to the heat. So this is a because it's a cycle. So it's already come from the back. So the entropy of the universe, if you don't consider anything but the, the system is thickly, the entropy of the universe, the entropy of yeah, the total entropy is minus q divided by t. And and the decreases by k log two. This is another way of seeing the of interpreting the stellar. Uh, well, uh, sorry, k log not not log two k uh, k i. 
So the entropy in, in the cycle, the entropy of the universe decreases by i. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I see well uh, your simple argument, but maybe where I'm lost is when you replace p by one over two, in order to be in the case of the star uh, engine and and, uh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, then on equality between the uh, uh, extracted work and the uh, kt. Uh, p is given by the initial position of the piston, so it's one half. Yeah. Has nothing to do with alpha. Alpha is what you move. And um, so P is one half. And I don't know if this is a. Uh, and uh, so if we find the same expression for the mutual information for P equal one, uh, one half, and uh, the expression of uh, this one, the same expression. So that's an equality for this case. And we don't see the inequality here. Well, inequality is because this. Well, I I I did that very rapidly, but I did like it cannot be more. It cannot be more because of the physical arguments. Yeah, but from the law, no, it equal. cannot be more because of. Uh, I mean, that I presented at the beginning of the afternoon the uh, uh, proof of this very fast. I mean, that it is uh, is this one. Uh, Okay. Uh, this one, no. Um, when I when I I did this this thing, it was very fast because I wanted to just grasp the idea. Yeah, you have a here the measurement. Uh, let's say uh, giving you for free, uh, give you for free an amount of free energy, which is uh, and then. From that, in that in. this is general. This is not for the Stila. This is this is super general. What we have done is to check that this. Sorry, we have, we, we, we have checked first that this is, is that the Stila are very thin. And we have checked that for a given being. For a given alpha, you can even reach the quality, which is not trivial. Somebody asked me, can, can you always reach the, the, the quality? For instance, we know that if, if you measure properties of the velocity, nobody knows how to use this information in an optimal way. Uh, and for instance, if you monitor a particle, in continuous time, it's also not clear if you can use this information. Uh, well, in this case, the information is infinite, so it is not clear that you can use this information for example. So there are some. We know that this 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 can be rich if you have um, if you measure the position and if you measure in discrete times, and and if you measure yeah, more or less we know that. that Actually, we have papers on how to reach this. This is called optimal maps for demons. And they are they are based on this property of reversibility that we discussed before. And um, and we have papers on when you can fulfill uh, this equality. But this inequality is as I said, it's a benchmark that uh, tells you that you can you can never do better than the problem is that you can reach this. Okay, so uh, so uh, uh, we have done. Uh, we have explored at the end of the day, and I hope you have a clear idea of how to incorporate information into the second law. This is the result. There are other results like um, information reservoirs and memories and so on, but this is the most important. This explains well explains. This uh, can be applied to SILA and to any feedback process. But we didn't address the most fundamental question, which is, um, is the second law valid? So what, which was Maxwell's original concern. Is it, is it valid or it depends on the object? If that's the second law depends on the information that we have, is a subjective 
property or objective or stuff and so on. And we will try to solve this tomorrow by incorporating the physical nature of the demo to the problem. So we will, we will have a system and a demo, and there will be uh, physical systems, and then we will apply these type of things to the physical system. And we will we will we will uh, derive um, Bennett's idea that that measurement costs you something we need to put them into measure and also to erase. Where is the, the and then at the end because I know that uh, the school has uh, or one of the first ideas was to have biology okay. but I will not enter into biology but um but there there is a tomorrow I will talk about information flow which is a, a tool to interpret uh, non equilibrium systems like motors and so on as information devices. It's something that people try. Okay. And I think. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe before we finish, maybe we could give opportunity to Zoom participants, maybe for one or two yeah, short sure. questions. I, I think that. What about the exercise? Did you do? No, from Mexico. They are already left. <laughs> Uh, I have a question. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, first one, I just want to make sure this feedback second law is valid for arbitrary protocol or the protocol that extremize the work and uh, information? No, no, no. It's an inequality. So it's valid for any protocol. It, of course, the mutual information depends on your measurement. But and, the, and on the state on the state of the system before the measurement, but the, the second law is completely general. It's completely general. Okay. And the second question is when we- uh, uh, Another question is how good is the inequality or how tight is the inequality? But the inequality is completely general. Okay. And the second question is when we do this uh, exercise too, the mutual information, which is supposed to be symmetric between X and M, uh, the expression we got seems uh, the asymmetric. If, no, no, I... that, uh, you, the problem is that you have to choose. So um, you have to choose one of the three possibilities. No? Uh, ah, you don't see me. Okay. Uh, No, it's, math it's a mathematical result. So this is, you have to choose between the three expressions, not these, these, this. I, I suggested you to use this one. You can use this one. H of X is H of P. It's true that apparently, but this is very difficult to calculate because you have to suppose that you know M and, and that how do you infer X from M? So it's the base rule, the base rule, no, you have to play. Yeah, it is not very easy. Mm -hmm. right. But the result must be the same because this is the mathematical result that the uh, information is symmetric. But the interpretation of it, so, so these formulas are these formulas are everything is equal, but it's it's, it's, it's not so trivial as I mean it, this is not intuitive that the reduction of of uncertainty in M due to X is equal to the reduction of uncertainty in X due to M. Mm -hmm. In many textbooks of information theory, this is okay. This is a hook. But to think of it, and it is, it is something which is non trivial. So, uh, I see. Okay. So it's not simply just replacing, I mean, swapping epsilon and p, the probabilities. Uh, no, no. It's more. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, that was my. Okay. Yeah, so for, this, for this thing, for instance, you have to assume you, you know f. Zero, but zero x x condition to zero is not one epsilon because you have the piece here, so uh, uh, it's not so clear. Actually, the calculation is uh, complicated. Okay, I understood. Okay, thank you. You can do it as an exercise. You can calculate the conditional probability. The conditional probability is just the joint 
probability divided by the condition. So we can do it, but it is a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. Look at what is the probability. In the denominator, you will have the probability of m equal c m equal one, which is already a mess. So this is skew that we this is skew that we calculated here. So uh, no, this is the probability that m is equal to zero. This, so it is, um, it is and this will be the denominator of the conditional probability. It's difficult, yeah. difficult. It's cumbersome. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe some more questions from Zoom. The chats. I don't the lectures flow. But the material will be very careful for looking at it again. Uh, I don't know what is the PowerPoint. The... Well, uh, I can give you the PowerPoint, but uh, the, the keynote, but uh, I think the paper is more clear, but well, I don't mind to send the slides. Uh, this will all be uploaded to the okay, I will send you the slides and uh, Okay, seems that uh, we do not have any more questions from Zoom. And uh, I think that uh, we are now about to closing this very, very successful day. I think that you are all still fresh, which means that we started at 9.30. Now it's six. This is how much it is eight hours and a half of thinking, lecturing, and the fact that you are, you are still fresh describes very well what was the day today. So thank you very much, Juan, for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.